What is up guys it's the real deal welcome back to the channel guys today we're gonna be doing dark fey floor 120 on hard and i've got a team that can do it in under two minutes it's very consistent uh out of eight runs you probably get one failed because of the true fears but outside of that very very consistent and the reason we want to farm dark fey is that she drops the best gear in doom tower out of all the bosses and of course it's lethal so it's upgraded savage with that built-in plus uh 10 crit rate and it just makes it easier to crit cap your nukas and it's just an amazing gear set so let me show you the team that we're rolling with and it's necmo deacon herndig gina and ronda and i will give you guys substitutes for every single of the champions like there's so many different options you can build with this team comp so necmo is the fastest at 282 speed and uh, round one can do what he wants round two we want to prioritize the a3 and then not use it just to get that turn meter boost and increase speed and we're making sure we lock out the a2 round three we need to make sure that we have that increased speed buff and that turn meter boost uh, just so that we go first. And then we're going to slow down our clones with the A2 and slow down the boss. It's so good. Such, such good ability for this. Next fastest champion is Deacon at 263 speed. And round one can do what he wants. Round two, we're locking it all out apart from the A1. Uh, round three... So basically we're doubling up on the turn meter fill with the A3 prioritizing that. And we're again pushing back the turn meter of the enemy. And then we're going to throw out decreased defense on, um, you know, on the boss and on the clones. Then uh, Gina is the third fastest at 251 speed. So round one, not doing anything there. Round two, we want to open with the A2 if it's up. And if not, we're locking it out for the rest of the fight. Round three, we want to prioritize the um, A2. And this will probably kill most of the clones. And then we want to open up with uh, the um, A3, which is going to do a huge amount of damage on the boss because that's just how Gina rolls. Then we got Ronda at 221 speed. Uh, round one, she can do what she wants. Round two, we are locking out the um, A3. We want to save that again for the clones. Uh, so we're going to open up with the A3, killing the clones and then locking it out. And then we want to prioritize the A2 because it does the most amount of damage. Um, and that will help just speed up things on the boss. And then the slowest at 215 is Herndig. So round one, we are going to lock out Arcane Tempest, the A2. Then we want to open up with the A2. So again, this is just going to increase damage that we do to the waves, just speed up the run a little bit. Uh, round three, we want to prioritize the um, A2. So again, this is going to help kill any clones that do stay up. And then we're going to open up with the A3. So this will push back the term here on the boss. And we just sort of want to try and do this one as much as possible. So that's the team setup. Let's roll the clip and then I'll go through all the subs with you. Here we go, guys. So Necmo coming in, boosting that turn meter, slaying the enemy. Deacon, drop defense, pushing back turn meter. Gina with a big slam. Ronda finishing it off. Um, next wave, you can see they're all force of champions. If I wanted to speed this up, I would need to bring in another Spirit Nuka. Um, looking at the team, things that I think I could actually do to improve this is maybe take out Herndig and bring in Soul Bomb Boya, um, Boa even. Um, you know, she hits hard, and being Spirit, she would really help drop this second wave a lot faster. But we're going to probably clear this in about 40 seconds, which is very good, um, and we'll be on the boss really, really quickly. Um, a real When you're building your team comps, the champions you want to have in mind is anyone that is super squishy. You want squishy champions for this. Uh, my Necmo is a little bit tanky, but not too tanky that we can't deal with him. Uh, what I love about Necmo, though, is he does bring in that leech. So if something goes a little bit wrong, you can heal up. Um, you just saw there, Gina, if you if you know, 
any sort of content you want to turn into a speed run, I think just chuck in Gnut and he will just do that for you. Um, he's just so, so good at it. Um, yeah, and we're just going to now, you know, we've taken out um, the clone team. We've taken out that single clone. Uh, we survived the true fear. And that's just a case of slowly chipping away at the boss. Um, but yeah, I will go through subs for every single champion. Um, G-Nut is a difficult one to replace, though. Um, basically, if you take away G-Nut, you're probably going to have to bring in two Allures to cover him. And if you bring in two Allures, um, it goes from about a two-minute run to about a five-minute run. It's still pretty consistent. Um, not as consistent as this, though. But it does slow things down a lot. And look, you can see we're like, oh, my God, we're not going to do two minutes. Oh, yes, we are. Here's g -Nut finishing it off with that clutch A3. I mean, just one of the best uh, PvE champions in the game. So, uh, Nekmo, obviously, he's our turn meter booster champion, so he's not doing a huge amount of damage, but he's done 400k, um, double <laughs> Herndig and Deacon. So, actually, maybe I should, uh, it's time to replace Herndig, and maybe Solbon Boa would actually be a way better option, to be honest. Uh Deacon, very, he's a bit tricky to um, to take away, but I'll talk about sub options for him. Uh, Gina, obviously, god tier, 2 million damage, what a boss. And Ronda, not as much, but obviously, she's sort of helping us clear waves. So, um, obviously, if I had like two Gnuts, that's what I'd be rolling with. But um, she's done a decent amount of here. But anyway, let's go on a Lumi Love and look at all the different sub options that we can use. So we're on Alumi Love and we're looking at the AoE decreased turn meter champions. And the best ones here would be Counter Slix, Lady Kimmy, Lysandra is like god tier for this. She completely puts her Dark Fae on lockdown. Uh, Razin could be used as your go second champion, but at the moment we're looking for the champion that would be the fastest on our team would be Nekmo. Uh, Susan. But obviously, Void Legendary, really hard to get. And then Epics, Deacon would be the best option. I don't really think anyone else would do it as good as him. But champions that you could bring in to sub... So if we've got Deacon as our number one champion, the second champion you could bring in is maybe Hikatoon, um, to. Fr I think she does throw out slows. It's been a long time since I've used Hikatoon, but she'd be a good option. Um, and who else would I use? Uh, Archmage would be good as well because he throws out stuns. And then we've got the single target decrease turn meter. So basically once we've got the boss down, obviously Gnart being god tier. Herndig, really good for keeping it on lockdown. Again, Lissandra, Lady Kimmy. Uh, you could use Scylla Drakes, but she can't. you have to make sure she's squishy. Otherwise, she might be a bit too tanky. And again, double allure is still a great strategy for this. It just means it slows down the run. So we've looked at for Nekmo and Deacon. Let's see what other sort of subs we can get in. So unfortunately for Gina, the only real replacements are is like two double allures. Because you really have to keep the boss under control. Um, but for Herndig, there's a lot of options. So we've got two rares that could fill his shoes, and that's Soul Bond Boa. Um, Boya, Boa, uh, and then we've got um, Cold Heart, obviously God Tier, Void Rare. Um, Epics, I don't think there's anyone that could really fill those shoes. Maybe Lua can hit pretty hard, um, and she does have control as well, so probably just Lua. Um, actually, yeah, and otherwise, um, damage dealer wise, as well, like Royal Guard. Um, would be a great option. Anyone that hits really, really hard. It does AoE damage like Trunder as well. Um, yeah, so turn me a control here. Gnut, Herndig. And that's pretty much the only nukers here that I can see that would fill his shoes. Um, AoE-wise, Biggin would be great. Um, Foley as well. Gorgrid. Um, obviously Void Legendary, but he is a beast. Not in Stone Skin, of course, though, because that will mess up the run. Uh, one thing you do want to avoid with Masteries as well is make sure you don't play um, Counter-Attack because that's some, sometimes that can cause you guys to have fail runs as well. Uh, Nephril can hit really hard as well, so he's another great option. 
Um, yeah, I mean, Valkyrie would not bring in just because the counter shield, the shields and the counter attacks, you're asking for failed runs. Yeah, but that's pretty much all of those champions. And again, like I said, we're getting Termia control and damage from Soul Bond and from Cold Hearts. So they're great, great options. And Ronda literally can be... Let me see if I can find like a list for Ronda. Okay, so let's go for a list of nukers that could replace Ronda. There's a whole bunch. Like um, Astralon would be great. Baron. Um, Biggin. Chagor. Kutraxa. Foley. I mean, literally any champion here that you see on this list that does AoE damage, that's either magic or spirit affinity, or even void, they will get the job done. Um, Tervolt would be like amazing, like single target nukers as well. And Whisper, they would do so much damage on the boss. But there's champions you need to be careful of, like Rotos. So obviously Rotos with his passive, because he can take a hit, um, you know, he's going to be able to survive and he'll turn around and just drop your team. But there's like so many champions here that you can see on the list that will be able to, to help you clear this. Anyway, so we've looked at subs, we've looked at the boss. Now let's check out the gear and masteries. First on the list, we've got Necmo, and we've got HP gloves, accuracy chest, speed on the boots, defense on the ring, defense on the amulet, and then HP on the banner. And this is, this is the Necmo that I actually use for Hydra. So pretty tanky, but not too tanky that we can't take him out. 53k HP, 3k defense, 282 speed. Um, and then 410 accuracy, a little bit of overkill on the accuracy, but it is good for Hydra. Uh, Brimstone is a necessity for Hydra. So of course, that's what we're rolling with. Uh, Masteries, this is just very, very typical Masteries that we use for Hydra and works great for, um, for Dark Fae as well. So taking a little bit of crit damage, crit, uh, crit rate, crit damage, and then basically all the damage Masteries into Warmaster. Uh, support tree is a little bit different so we're taking arcane cellar tree and rapid response so they're both masteries that are going to help boost our turn meter uh lasting gift so it just means that our speed buff can la uh, last longer on our champions keeping us faster and master hexa just to keep our debuffs on the boss for longer so deacon in double perception and a broken set and we've got crit rate gloves accuracy on the chest Speed on the boots, defense on the ring, defense on the amulet, and then accuracy on the banner. Total stats, 46k HP, 2.9k defense, 263 speed, almost crit capped, uh, 100 crit damage-ish, and then 400 accuracy. Again, you just want them to be squishy, and that's why we've got the crit damage gloves, uh, sorry, crit rate gloves, just to try and improve our damage. Fully booked, and then masteries, just very, very standard stuff. Again, going like for damage into War Masters, and then support tree, uh, and just taking lasting gifts and Master Hexer again. So this is the Gina that we've got, and he's a bit of a budget build. So we got perception uh, and two pieces uh, crit damage. So we've got crit damage on the gloves, accuracy on the chest, speed on the boots. Defense on the ring, crit damage on the amulet, and then uh, accuracy on the banner. 40k HP, 3.3k defense, 251 speed. Uh, crit capped, 268 crit damage, and then 386 accuracy. Um, so I use him for Hydra and Finite as well. So really, really good build. Um, we've taken Phantom Touch, and that is just because of Finite. Um, otherwise, I would probably take... Uh, soul reap and then masteries um again pretty pretty standard stuff making sure we take giant slayer for those triple hits and cycle violence is a must because if we get a big hit with that a3 there's a good chance we can uh reduce the cooldown on that and then master hexa is essential as well just to keep our debuffs up for as long as possible as well so we've got ronda in lethal and cruel um, gloves, crit damage, attack on the chest, speed on the boots. I'd prefer these to be attack percentage. 
Uh, luckily, we've got some really good rolls on these boots, so actually they're still pretty decent. Uh, attack on the ring, crit damage on the amulet, and then attack on the banner. 31k HP, nice and squishy. 6k attack, 221 speed, crit capped, and 261 crit damage. Um, so this build, I've built her particularly like this because I wanted her to be super fast just to help me deal with Wukong. So that's why she's so fast. Um, unfortunately, she's not the best Nuka on my account. Otherwise, she'd have better gear on and she would have attack boots. Of course, we're taking Soul Reap um, just because it's such a good blessing. Uh, Masteries, just your typical standard Nuke Builder Masteries. Um, you could take out retribution and swap it for cycle revenge just to help us deal with dark fey but for arena of course you want to be taking retribution and we've got whirlwind of death because if she's getting kills and she does get kills it just helps speed her up and it's also good for arena as well because if you kill wukong you want to be fast just so if he does res or anything you can just cycle back around to ronda and just drop him again uh, opportunist as well just great for arena and we're taking helm smasher again all for arena but it still works on dark face so it's not a big deal and last but not least we've got herndig in savage and perception 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 and he is a hard champion to build he is stat hungry um so we've got crit damage gloves attack on the chest speed on the boots attack on the ring crit damage on the amulet and then accuracy on the banner. 32k HP, almost 4k attack, 215 speed. We're not even crit capped with him and 230 crit damage and 315 accuracy. Um, so yeah, he needs a lot of stats. He needs attack, he needs speed, he needs crit rate, he needs crit damage and accuracy. Uh, really, really hard to get all those stats on him. Um, no blessing on him, but if I was to take one, of course, it'd be Soul Reap, just so you can get the, the reset on his A1. Uh, Masteries, we did go for in the support tree for him, just to help give him a bit more accuracy, so he can push back that turn meter. And again, sort of sort of standard stuff going on, making sure we take Helm Smasher, because um, I did used to use him in Arena a little bit. Uh, Whirlwind of Death, because if he does kill people, it's going to boost his speed. And Cycle of Violence, because if he does a big hit, it just means that we can reset one of his abilities. So that's pretty much the end of the video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Please leave me a cheeky thumbs up. Make sure you smash, smash, smash that subscribe. I'll catch you all in a video soon. Peace.